All right, welcome to the next daily drawing. Today we're going to be drawing a bald eagle. Um, so the first thing that I want to do is I'm going to look at the shape and stuff of it. There's a lot going on here. The first thing I want to do is I'm going to establish the body. So we have just a very simple oval for the body. The head kind of sticks out also in kind of an oval shape. We got some oval legs. We got a triangle-ish tail. And then we got kind of like greater than or less than signs for the tops of the wings. And then we have like two smiles for this wing. And then we have like one really big kind of parenthesis for this one. So to get started, let's uh, first things first, make sure you save enough space for the wings. If you draw the body really big, you're gonna have to end up either shrinking the wings to fit or taking it off the page and you won't get to have the joy of drawing the entire wing. So I'm gonna start off with drawing an oval kind of in the center-ish of my page, not too big. Just kind of a smallish kind of a ovally shape like this and notice that i'm kind of tilting it this bird's kind of flying it and i'm guessing getting ready to pick up something so that's why it's slightly tilted you don't want it to look like totally sideways or anything but it's just slightly tilted oval all right so then what i want to do is i'm going to draw the head and then connect the neck to the head so for the head i'm going to go at the top of this oval thing right here and then i'm going to draw a smaller kind of ovally shape that is tilting down instead like this so we have kind of like a uh, bent forward, kind of like if you imagine that it's going and looking down, it would follow that kind of curve pretty naturally. So you do want to overlap the body because the head's kind of leaning down and it's not perfectly straight up or anything. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and erase the body on the inside here so it's not distracting me. All right, now, uh, especially for bald eagles, this makes it pretty easy to see where the neck is. We can see that like curve of the white floof that's on their neck. So all you have to do really for the neck in this particular picture is we're just going to start on the head we're just going to curve it down until it touches the top of the uh, ovally shape that we drew for the body. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to draw a parenthesis until it touches the uh, bottom of the head right here. All right, so um, I've noticed that I've drawn my head a little bit too big because the beak is going to go down here. So I don't need the head to be quite that big. So I'm going to go ahead and shrink my head just a little bit. If you drew yours small enough, you don't have to do this. This is just me personally. I got to fix it because I made an error and that's okay. That's natural. All right. So now that I have my head, and I have my neck, and I have my body, now I'm going to go ahead and focus on just the head. I'll come back for the rest of the body and stuff. So for the head, something that I notice, if I zoom in here, they have very kind of narrow faces, and then they have like a beak coming out of it. So what I want to do is I'm going to first establish the beak area, and then it can help me draw the uh, rest of it afterwards. So if we notice on the beak, it's... Uh, on the bottom half of the head. So there is kind of an eyebrow indent and then it makes a big frown or a big curve going down. It's a little pointy and then it comes back in on the head. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say that this right here is gonna be the forehead. So I wanna drop it down just a tiny bit. So I'm doing a tiny diagonal line right here on the edge of the head. And then I'm going to do a frown. Not too big, but you don't want it to be like super small. So you don't wanna go like toucan on it, but you don't want it to be like chickadee with like how tiny it would be. All right. so. A reasonably sized frowny face and if you want to do measuring measuring can help so the length of the beak should be the same length as uh, this distance to the top of the head so make sure that it's not too big but not too small all right once we have that established then what I want to do is I'm actually gonna add a marker dot so I'm gonna go inside the head just a little bit close to the bottom and put a little dot so that I know where I need to end my beak I'm always adding a marker dot just helps with the placement of things so then what I want to do is I'm just going to connect it with a frown, kind of mimicking that same motion that we drew on the top of the beak here, so that I get the point of my beak. Now, this bird's mouth is closed. If you want to open the mouth, all you have to do is just like drop it down a little bit, but I'm going to stick to this picture because it looks pretty intense. So for the lower jaw, we can see it right here behind the upper jaw. It's not even with the point, so we want to leave a gap. So don't start here, go in a little bit, like maybe about this far. And then what we're going to do is we're just going to draw a very thin line connecting it back around here and then what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to go around that uh, dot that we drew before like this so that'll make it to where I have my um, I was about to say muzzle it's not called a muzzle where I have my beak to where the lower jaw is going to wrap around the opening for the mouth area if you see there all right so to finish this up all I'm going to do is just going to connect this kind of with a little bit of a wonk so just kind of like a uh, smile of sorts but I'm kind of connecting it very lightly to this particular area. And so um, it, it kind of depends on what angle you're looking at. So you might have to increase that wonk or you might have to make it a little shorter. So for mine in particular, because the eagle's looking down, this right here is where I can see my kind of wonky area. So that's where I'm gonna draw it. And then there is a little bit of white floof below the beak. 
So if you need to, you can extend that head out just a little bit to go underneath the beak for the white floof. All right, so the beak is probably the hardest part of the face. So as long as you got your beak, the rest of this should be pretty easy. All right, so there is a nose. <laughs> Before we drew a frog, and I didn't see a nose. I don't know if, what's up with that. But yeah, so there's just going to be like a little tiny ovaly shape. I don't see the other nose because it's on the other side of the face. So I only see like one nostril. All right, for the eyes, what I want to do is I want to go across from the nose like this. Whenever you get where the beak is starting, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to draw a little flat line going back like this very lightly because I'm going to erase most of that. And then what I want to do is below that flat line. Okay, so it should be in between the corner of the mouth and this line is where we want to draw the eye. All right, I'm going to draw a smile like this and then curving it back up. So now it depends on the intensity that you want for the eyes. If you want it really intense, you can leave it with a harsh diagonal line. But if you want it to look a little bit softer, a little bit more friendlier, feel free to extend that up to make it a little bit more rounded and not totally flat. So draw whatever kind of shape we want. So like if you have like a sharp diagonal eye like this, that's pretty intense. If it's more rounded, it looks a little bit more like soft. And then of course you can do anything in between. So you can have like slightly rounded, you can have like tilted up. So there's lots of different expressions you can get just by the shape that you do for the eye. So pick an expression that you like and kind of just roll with it. I'm just gonna do mine like, he's determined, but he's like, hey, hey yeah, I'm excited. All right, so there we go. All right. One thing I would suggest doing is add the pupil on the inside and then leave a little bit of a highlight. So we do want to leave a rim around the pupil, especially for bald eagles, because they usually have very distinctively golden eyes. So I'm going to leave that kind of rim around it. All right. Now, something that you can do is um, a lot of times people will kind of shade in underneath the eye and behind the eye just because they do have such deep setted brows. You don't have to do this part if you don't want to. It just kind of helps make it feel a little bit more bald eagle-y. All right, so now we have our forehead and we have it going back to the beak area or uh, not the beak area, the neck area. This right here, we do want to leave a little bit of that jaw, but I can't erase the upper jaw right here. All right, now something that's very distinctive of bald eagles is they have kind of like that spiky aesthetic to the end of their neck feathers. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna very lightly erase this kind of ring that I have around for the neck feathers. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna replace them with the kind of like the Z line. That's just where we're drawing like the letter Z or something kind of sideways. And then we're just making it kind of slightly curved to where I'm just drawing parentheses and frowny faces. Uh, main goal though, don't scribble like this where I have a lot of overlapping lines because that's gonna lose the um, kind of aesthetic of like a nice texture. So it's okay to make it a little bit looser you know, some like really thin, just be careful not to scribble, okay? So I'm just gonna kind of like sketch in some kind of feathery things. I'm not worried about making it perfect, like the picture. I'm just worried about getting like somewhat of an aesthetic of the uh, feather texture. All right, so now that we've got some of that, I'm gonna add a little bit to the corner of the cheek right here, just to help establish that that is full of feathers as well. You can even add a couple really tiny ones to like the edge of the eye if you want to, but I wouldn't go too crazy unless you're going for realism, you can add a little bit more than that. All right, now that I have my bald eagle's head completed, now I can move on to the body. I'm gonna go ahead and do the legs and the tail. I'm gonna save the wings for last. Uh, personally, wings are my favorite thing to draw. Well, one of them. All right, so now that I have my head and my body, uh, before I move on to the legs, I wanna make sure that the body is the correct size. So I'm gonna measure my head tilt it so the body should be a little longer than the head which mine is so I'm gonna leave this if you feel like you drew your head really big and your body's too small now all you have to do is just drop that down and make it a little bigger okay so measure that before you start adding your legs otherwise you're gonna end up with like a really big-headed eagle which could be pretty cool if you're going for a caricature all right so now we're gonna zoom in on my legs all right so the first thing I see is that they have really really big thighs and then they have like uh, talons feet sticking out of them. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna start with the, this one cause it'll be a little bit easier to show you first and then I'll show you this one that's gonna be a little bit more complicated. All right, so I'm gonna leave, this right here is the belly. So I'm gonna leave the belly here. I'm going to go about halfway in between the neck and the bottom of the body, find that halfway mark. That's where I'm going to then draw a drumstick. <laughs> so it's just gonna be like an ovally shape sticking down like this. Just trust me, I know it looks super silly. All right, so we're gonna draw our little drumstick sticking out. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to draw a stick foot first and then I'm gonna bulk it up, okay? So I'm gonna start, actually uh, I'm gonna draw a little bit more of a drumstick here. So at the end of this drumstick, I'm gonna draw like a little uh, parenthesis or like a backwards C. This is gonna be the start of my leg. So, or actually uh, I guess this is the ankle and this will be where the forearm is. 
And then what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna draw a short line coming out of there. And then I'm going to draw one, two, <laughs> three and then four. I know this looks really dumb, just trust me. All right, so once I have my little stick leg done, then what I can do is I can start figuring out where I want to put my claws and talons. So before you flesh this out, if you drew the frog with me, we actually did this uh, yesterday. Start with drawing, like now this one you're gonna draw like a very small circle on the tips of each of these feet. And then after you draw that small circle, go ahead and draw the talons. So uh, if you're looking at a reference photo, definitely just use that as a reference. So all I'm doing is I'm doing a frowny face and then just kind of slowly following it back up with a really thin line like this. And then just really paying attention to what direction the talons are going in. So I'm using my picture as my reference here as I'm going. All right, so now what I'm gonna do is after I have the uh, knobs for the tips of the toes and the talons, now I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna make it thicker as it gets closer to the body. So here all I'm gonna do is on the top one, it's pretty easy. I'm just gonna follow this, maybe make it a little bit thicker on the top here. And then in between the feet, what I'm going to do is I'm actually just going to bring it down until it touches close to here. And I would suggest as you go, just erase as you go. That way you don't forget to go back and erase something. So I'm going to keep the top of my foot line. I'm going to go back down for the bottom part. And you can add like, uh, if you'll notice in this picture, it's kind of wiggly. So if you want to add slightly wiggly textures, that's fine. Or if you want to leave them smooth to give it a little bit more of a cartoony stick, that's fine as well. All right. So then I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm just kind of connect it back to the body. I'm going to leave a little bit of a gap before I touch this uh, back claw right here so that it's not fully connected though, because I'm going to then just curve it down to touch this claw like this. And then afterwards, do make sure that this part should be pretty thick, so make sure that's not too skinny. So I'm just gonna carry on with a slight frown and connect it back to this foot. All right, now that I have all of my talons established, I can erase any of those inside lines, and I can also erase this inside gap right here where I had to connect that extra part to that muscle. All right, now that I have all of that kind of sketched out, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to add a little bit of texture. So on the front of the leg, we've got some of those kind of Z lines. All I'm doing is I'm actually doing kind of rounded ones. So I'm just drawing like the letter M over and over. And then the same thing back here, I'm just gonna draw some M shapes. And all I'm doing is I'm just literally wiggling it as I go down. Once again, don't scribble, otherwise it'll look just messy and not feathery. So I'm just adding like little M shapes going all the way down. Just give it a little bit of texture. And I see that there's some longer kind of M shapes. So I'm just doing some longer sticky down things. All right, so that'll give me my first leg and I know it looks weird, just, just go with me on this. All right, so now that I got my first leg done, now I can go ahead and start on my second leg. So, and which of course, if you wanna add more texture, feel free to, but you don't have to. All right, so now that this one's established, I'm gonna move on to this one right here. Now, my suggestion, because if you'll notice it's coming out at us, that's really complicated. To simplify that, draw the foot first and then draw the leg which sounds weird, but trust me. All right, so right here is where I would draw the foot. So I noticed that it's close to this leg, but it's not touching. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to just draw like the letter Y, <laughs> and then I'm just gonna draw like another toe sticking out right here, okay? So it's almost like an upside down peace sign in a way. All right, so then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to go ahead and draw those little uh, toe tips like this. And then after I draw my toe tips, uh, really paying attention to this direction in the picture, this talon's going up. This one's going kind of forward, so just making like a sharper turn. And then this one, it's a little hard to see, but it's kind of curving down like this. And then this one's going to the front. So it's kind of like you're drawing like uh, J's over and over, or like little uh, curvy triangly things. All right, once I have all of my feet uh, claw shapes and I have the tips of my toes, now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna connect them back together. If it helps, you can lightly erase this, because I know, especially if you're drawing it really small, it's hard to get an eraser in there. So if you lightly erase it to where you just barely see it, that can help you out tremendously. And then what you're gonna do is you're just going to, okay, so I'm gonna draw so you can still see it though. All right, so what you're gonna do is you're just going to start on the outside of the line, bring it in, almost touch it, but don't quite touch it. Bring it back out, outside of the line, almost touch it bring it back out. And then down here, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna connect it back down here and then outlining it to where it's kind of like you're playing like the don't touch me game to where you're leaving a gap on the inside. And then afterwards we can just erase that if you still see it. So now I have my claw foot and it looks like it's coming out at me, which looks pretty dynamic and cool. All right, so now that I have that, I'm gonna look and see where my other leg is. So if I look at the top of this knee, it's almost lined up. This knee is a little bit higher up than this one. So if I look at this knee area, I need to go up in a slight diagonal so that I know that this right here is gonna be about where my knee is gonna go. So because it's coming right at me, I don't see this part of the leg in my picture. So I'm not gonna have to draw that because it's literally behind the foot. So all I have to do is I'm just gonna draw a frown coming down like this. 
And then I'm gonna add a couple feather floofs below the leg, like this just to tell me that there was a uh, part of the leg behind that foot. So just adding some of those W shapes beneath the foot so that I know that that is being overlapped. And you can also add some W shapes around the leg too if you want to, but it's okay to leave that top part smooth if you would rather leave that smooth. And now I have both of my legs complete to where it looks as though it's being overlapped. So that is a little bit more complicated, but I think you can do it. So if you struggle, feel free to ask. I'd be more than happy to send you some more tips and stuff. All right, so before I move on, I'm gonna add a little bit of those W shapes to the belly just to make it not so smooth. Uh, you can add them to the back too if you want to, but that's kind of up to you. All right, so now I have my very awkward looking bird <laughs> because I'm missing my wings and my tail. Now the tail luckily is super easy to do. All I'm gonna do is I'm gonna very loosely start right here on the back of the thigh. And I'm going to very lightly draw a really big diagonal line. And then I'm going to go uh, right here, uh, kind of like where this uh, leg met the body. I'm going to draw also another really big diagonal line, like this. And then I'm just going to very, very lightly, because I want to be able to erase it, connect it with a huge smiley face, like this. All right, now, I am not a biologist. I don't know anatomy terms, so I'm just going to make them up as I go. But here we have a large floofy floof, and here we have really long feathery floofs. So on the large floofy floof, I'm assuming that's where the muscle is on the tail, and we can see where it's slightly darker here. What we're going to do is we're going to add a layer of smaller feathers here, and then we're going to add a layer of big feathers out here. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start by drawing very lightly the shape of the uh, larger floofy floof, or the smaller floofy floof. So it's just going to be like a little smiley face that we're adding to the bottom of the body, like this. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a bunch of those W shapes on the inside so that I know that's full of feathers. And then if you want to, you can add two rows of even smaller fluffy fluffs so that it makes it look like there's a bunch of feathers kind of condensed together in this particular area. And all I'm doing is I'm just drawing the letter W over and over, and that's how I'm adding those feather textures. All right, so once you have the floofy floof all fluffed, then what you're gonna do is you're going to use larger, longer Ws. So I'm just gonna start here. And you don't have to follow that um, curve right here. You don't have to follow this perfectly. It's okay to make it a little uneven. So I'm going to draw my first long feather. And then what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to start a little bit on the inside and then draw my other long feather. And I'm just going to keep doing that. It's okay to have some of them bigger, some of them shorter. It'll actually make it feel more natural if you have a slight variation in the feathers, okay? So I'm just going to start on one and continue on the other until I get them all kind of fleshed out. Do -do -do -do. Like this. All right, and then afterwards, if the extra line bothers you, you feel free to erase that. And of course, as always, you can also erase that before you start so it's so light that you don't really see it. All right, so there's my feathers. And of course, if you want to add more texture, you can add some like zigzags on the edges of these because you can see where they're like not perfect. They're kind of a little frayed, I think is the term. So if you wanted to add some more realism, you can add some zigzags on there, but that's optional. You don't have to do that. All right, so now I have my bird's wings and I have my legs and I've got my strange armless body. The very last thing we're going to do is we're going to add the wings. So if I'm looking at the wing here, this one is a little bit simpler because it doesn't have as many like obvious folds. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to draw, sticking right out of the top of the neck, I'm going to draw a huge triangle that's really long. So on the top of the neck right here, I'm just going to go up like this very lightly. I'm going to curve it back down and then touch the forehead area right here. So this is gonna be kind of like, if you ever eat chicken wings, <laughs> which are really delicious by the way, if you ever eat chicken wings, this is kind of like the meat part where you'd actually eat. The rest of this is all just feathers mostly. So this is the start of the chicken wing. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a slight change in direction like this. So this, we're gonna bend that chicken wing. So that's the full extent of the chicken wing. And if you want to, you can erase this inside piece right here. So now that I have my uh, meteor part of my wing drawn, now I can actually draw the floofy parts of the wing. So, um, and by the way, if you wanna keep it smooth, you can, or if you wanna go back and add kinda like little small smiley textures on the inside, you can. That's up to you. You can add as much detail or as little detail as you want. All right, so now that I have that, I'm gonna very lightly draw the shape that this wing is making, and then I'm gonna come back and add feathers. So the overall shape is we're gonna extend this arm out just a tiny bit, and then we're going to add a huge smile and a flat line to connect it. And notice that it connects right there, uh, right above the knee. So I'm going to start above the knee. I'm going to draw it kind of flat going out first. And then once I get below the uh, chicken wing part, that's where I'm going to add my really big kind of parenthesis shape like this. That way I know that that's about how far out my feathers need to reach. 
All right, once I have that established, then what I do is I'm gonna actually do, there's, uh, I guess it's called the false wing or something, but there's a row of smaller feathers here that we can vaguely see. And then we have these really, really long, like I think primary pins or something, I don't know, long feathers. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to start down here. I'm going to curve up like this until it touches that part that bent. This is the first part of that set of small wings. And then I'm gonna do another big curve and connect it to the other part of the end of the chicken wing. I call the chicken, sorry bird, you're, you're an eagle, whatever. All right, so this is gonna be the first layer. This is the second layer, and this is gonna be our third really big floofy long layer. So in order to make this look more like a wing and not like a strange shape of lobs, is I'm going to draw, once again, using that kind of W texture, keep them kind of short, not too short, but you don't want to be super, super long. And notice the direction that I'm curving them. I'm kind of pointing them all inwards. So make sure that they're not all going perfectly flat like this, because that's going to look a little awkward. They're kind of curving. So I'm curving my pencil as I'm drawing those feathery floofs so that they're all kind of facing the actual wing. We don't want to have like flat ones going out in this direction because it wouldn't physically attach. And if you want to, you don't have to, but if you want to, you can do like another row that's a little bit smaller like this, just to give us a little bit more texture. I'm going to do the same thing over here. So floofy floofs curving it kind of on the inside facing that inner point right there and then if you want to do another row doo -doo -doo -doo. and there we go so there's my inner floofs and then the very last thing I got to do for this wing is do those really long long feathers so I'm going to use this as my guideline and once again if you want to erase it lightly so that you know where you want to stop that's fine or if you want to keep it dark that's fine and then you can come back to it all right so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do kind of the same technique this time though I'm going to slowly let them start getting bigger and bigger so this is just how we did the tail feather as you're just gonna start on a feather, go down until about where you had that line and then just bring it back up. My goal is to kind of aim it towards the uh, bone right here. So wherever you have that change, that's where you're aiming your feathers towards. It's kind of like they're all going towards that particular part. So that's why I'm curving my feathers as I go up. So notice that I'm slowly starting to make them go flatter and flatter until I get to the top like this. And so now I have my kind of spread eagle uh, kind of wings going out. All right, so that pretty much concludes the wing. If you want to, you can add more feathers, have fun with the feathers. Just keep in mind, the closer to the top of the wing part you get, the tinier the feathers are. So make sure you're not adding like massive feathers up here because otherwise that's gonna look like really awkward. All right, so now that I got that wing, my final wing, and then we are done, is this one over here. All right, so this one's a little bit more of a weird shape, but um, we could do it. All right, so what we're gonna do first is we're gonna look at this. So we're gonna start with just a tiny lump. This is gonna be the shoulder. So start, um, actually exact same spot that you started before. We're just gonna add a small frown like this. That'll get our shoulder established. And then once we have our shoulder established, what we're gonna do is we're gonna add a big, big, big smile going up. So this is kind of the start of the chicken wing is what we're doing. It should go a little bit higher than this wing. So that's how big this wing is compared to the other. So go a little bit higher than that wing. Really, really big wing. And then what you're gonna do is you're going to draw a flat line kind of sort of frowning down, not too uh, frowny though. It's relatively of a diagonal line almost, but it does still make a slight curve. All right, so now that we've got shoulder, inner part of that uh, drumstick thing, and then we have the outer part of that drumstick thing. Then what we're gonna do is we're going to go, okay, so across from this, I'm gonna very lightly draw a diagonal line. So it's gonna look kind of like a bat wing at first, which is weird, but it works. All right, so I'm gonna draw like a little bit of a battish line here. And then to just draw a big parenthesis to connect those. So that'll be the um, outer part of those inner wings. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to draw another smile. Notice that I'm starting a little bit higher up though, okay? So don't start even with this because otherwise the wing will be a little too big. Start a little bit higher up. And then what we're going to do is we're going to do a big smile. And my goal is to connect it to this thigh right here, okay? So I'm going to do a big smile and connect it to the thigh. So shoulder, inner line, outer line big curve and really big curve connected to the butt <laughs> or the thigh sorry all right so once I get this part done then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to I'm sorry <laughs> I'm gonna draw the inner wing so to do this what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start with a big smile I'm gonna start similar to where I stopped here big smile until I get close to touching the top part here I'm gonna do one more smile here this will tell me where these smaller wings are and where the bigger wings are or the feathers anyway all right, once I get that established, then it, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the same thing that I did over here. So I'm going to draw kind of smaller wings or feathers. Once again, kind of pointing towards the top part of the wing. Okay, so pointing in this direction and then do some small feathers over here. 
curving it as I point. And this particular bird, we can see like one feather sticking out. If you want to do that, you can have like a layaway feather. Most of the time you don't see feathers on the top of the wing pointing out because those are supposed to be smooth to make them more aerodynamic. So you don't usually see feathers popping up unless they're kind of like fluffing their feathers. All right, so then if you want to add another row, of course you can always go back. You can add another row of just those little W shapes. Just give it a little bit more. And um, if it bothers you that we don't have the chicken wing visible on this one, if you want to, you can draw a little line up and then add a little bit of those really tiny feathers. And that's fine too. So if you want to add that additional detail just for symmetry's sake, you can, and that'll work out great. All right, so now to finish it up, all we have to do is just draw those longer feathers. And by the way, I was just erasing that lightly so that's not so obviously there, but longer feathers and uh, keep in mind your goal is to point them towards the top of the wing so make sure that you're slowly curving those as you get further out and then um, this part right here the feathers are going to be slightly downwards first and then they're going to start curving it out so really pay attention to the direction that you want your feathers to be going okay so see how this is kind of pointing in this direction these are pointing to the inner wing right here so there's a slight change in direction all right so if you have any extra lines that you don't want, feel free to erase those. And I think we have our bald eagle. It actually turned out really nice. I love that. All right. If you want to add more details, like additional fluffs and feathers, all you have to do is just draw kind of like what we do for the frogs, like little C shapes over and over. You can draw some like C shapes, just add a little bit more fluff to it. And um, I wouldn't go too crazy with it, but you can add a little bit of fluff in some of the parts of the body. Uh, keep in mind, there's no small feathers down here, so don't add a bunch of little C shapes down here because that's going to look super weird. You can add like a uh, rougher feather shapes just by adding some like zigzags on the feathers themselves, like the edges to make it look kind of like more like an older, rougher, kind of like more a uh, battle worn eagle. And that's fine too. So you can add some of those details if you want to. But um, uh, yeah, so other than that, I'm not, I'm not going to go too crazy on my details. I'm just going to go ahead and shade a little bit here just to make it stand out a little bit more. Um, I wouldn't shade too much on the head because especially for bald eagles, they're supposed to be like really uh, pale colored uh, feathers on their head. Like I think pretty much white. And um, yeah, so there we go. There is a bald eagle. I hope you guys had a lot of fun, um, especially since uh, like uh, uh, America, their, like bird thing is a bald eagle. Did you know that American's bird was almost a turkey? I think that would have been so amazing. Of course, I like the bald eagle, but the turkey would be like such a legit like uh, bird for our country. But like, um, I also think it's funny that uh, bald eagles, they don't actually have like a really, really loud, intimidating screech. They sound more like seagulls. So they make like these really high pitched screechy sounds instead of this like really dramatic, loud sounding screech that I think, isn't it like a, uh, I think it's a uh, red tail hawk is the sound that they use a lot for like uh, advertisements and stuff. Cause the bald eagle just sounds too much like, I don't know, like a songbird whenever it screeches. But yeah, so. There we go. Feel free to continue adding more to it. You can use your eraser to really make things pop out and stuff, but I think I'm going to call that there for a day. All right. I hope you had fun drawing. Have a good day. Bye.